Hey everyone, it's Allie and welcome to Book Miss. Today I am super cozied up. I'm in my comfy skims PJs with a homemade blanket from my mother-in-law actually and one of my favorite mugs, which is saying a lot because I have a lot of mugs, but it says professional bookworm on it. So of course it is one of my favorites. And I've also got a big, beautiful box from Book Outlet. This I bought like beginning of November, but they were doing an early Black Friday sale. Basically Book Outlet is always having some kind of sale. If for some reason you go on their site and there's not a sale going on, just wait like two days and there probably will be one. So their sales are different all the time, but this one was one I've seen a couple times on their site. They do $5.99 fiction books. And then I think they also had a discount on other genres of books as well. But I kind of blacked out. I can't even really remember what I got, so this should be pretty fun to open together. And not sponsored, but I am a huge lover of Book Outlet, which you know if you have been on my channel for a while or you just look around, pretty much all my big book hauls do come from Book Outlet. And if you are a first time buyer, I have a link in the description where you can get some money off. I have had nothing but good experiences with Book Outlet. And even when they accidentally sent me the wrong order a couple months ago, they literally let me keep all of the books and I was able to do a big giveaway for you guys. All right, but first up, this is a cover that I actually really, really like. I think I did end up getting a lot of thrillers just because I am really, really enjoying thrillers lately. So this one is called For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing, who is the author of My Lovely Wife. I own this book. I think I actually got it from Book Outlet before, and I haven't gotten around to reading it yet, but I've heard really, really good things about My Lovely Wife. So when I saw that this book was available, I decided to just go ahead and get it. Uh, and I know I'm gonna love this already. It says, a bold, sneaky thriller set at a prestigious private school. I don't know why, but I just really love of books, especially thrillers, I think, that are set in either like private schools or private universities, like that kind of prestigious setting, I guess. And it says it's complete with interfering parents, overeager students, and one teacher who just wants to teach them all a lesson. And the main character in this book is actually a guy. And I've been thinking lately, wow, like pretty much every book I've read for the last several months at least, the main character is a woman, which is, you know, fine, but sometimes it's nice to just switch it up and read books where a man is the main character. And I find thrillers, especially women, are often the main characters, so I am really excited to dive into this one. I'm definitely gonna have a really good winter of reading. But yeah, hardback book, really nice book, only six bucks. And this one was just published a couple years ago in 2021. This one has been on my radar for a while. I literally have no idea what it's about, but it's been staring at me through the screen because it has been on Book Outlet for a little bit. And it's called How to Survive Your Murder by Danielle Valentine. And the reason that this really stuck out to me is that the cover looks very similar to the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder covers. I think it's pretty much the same font and this is of course a thriller as well. It says that Alice Lawrence is the sole witness in her sister's murder trial and in the year since Claire's death, Alice's life has completely fallen apart. Her parents have gotten divorced. She's moved into an apartment that smells like baloney and she's being forced to face her sister's killer and a courtroom full of people who doubt what she saw in a corn maze a year earlier. And it seems like this is definitely set during the month of October, Halloween. I'm probably not gonna be able to wait until next fall to read this book, but it does sound like a very good, cozy YA thriller. This one I absolutely know I'm not gonna be able to wait until the next spooky season to read. This is The Last to Vanish by Megan Miranda. I've read four of her books so far and I've really, really enjoyed them all. She's quickly become one of my favorite authors in the thriller genre. I actually just finished one of her books just about a week ago. And yeah, literally none of the four have disappointed me so far. So she's an author who every time I go on Book Outlet, I just kind of put her name in there to see if there's anything new. And sure enough, not too long ago, they did put this one on the site. It says that 10 years ago, Abigail Lovett fell into a job she loves. And it does say that it's a cozy resort nestled in the mountains of North Carolina. Tourists are drawn to the town for its outdoor offerings, but also for its notorious history as the last known location location for six different visitors who vanished without a trace over the past three decades. So a journalist is coming to investigate the story of the six people who vanished 
and then he ends up vanishing himself. This sounds like an absolutely cozy but spooky thriller where, you know, all the people in the town, all the people who work for the inn, they all have their different secrets and they're all gonna slowly come out as you get through the book. This one I thought would just be really great for the winter season. This is The Bookshop on the Corner by Jenny Colgan. I know she writes a lot of really, really cozy books, a lot of books that are like set during the Christmas period. I don't think I actually have read anything by her, but when I saw this on Book Outlet, I wanted to pick it up and just try her out because I think this is one of her most famous books. The main character, Nina, moves to a sleepy village. She buys a van, transforms it into a mobile bookshop that she drives from neighborhood to neighborhood. And it sounds like she's just gonna form all these relationships with people in the town and she discovers that there's plenty of adventure, magic, and soul in a place that's beginning to feel like home. So this will be a nice break from my love of thrillers, just having something very wholesome and very cozy. I don't love to read books like this all the time. I need a little bit of action in my stories a lot, but I have found that I really enjoy reading books like this after I've read some more intense books. It's like a palate cleanser, I guess. Next up, we have another YA thriller. This is Karen McManus's You'll Be the Death of Me, and I didn't even realize. I guess I got a signed copy. There you go, that's her signature. This is one of my favorite authors in the YA thriller genre. She just writes a dang good book. She wrote the One of Us is Lying trilogy, I believe, and I think I only read the first one of that or I just like really forget. So I need to go back and either read or reread those. But she also has written a couple other standalone books. This is a standalone book and I've read two of those and they were both really good. It's another book like many YA thrillers that is set in a school, which as I said, I really do like that. Ivy, Mateo, and Cal used to be close and now all they have in common is Carlton High and the beginning of a very bad day. So it sounds like friends, that have drifted apart, but when they spot another high school student skipping school and then he ends up murdered, they find that they all have something in common and that is a connection to the dead student. And I think this author does a really great job of pacing. Her books are always like the perfect length. I never feel like things should be cut out or things should be added. She really just is excellent at creating an engaging story and I feel like I always read her books in like one night and I just really gobble them up. Okay, let's switch genres a little bit. This is Phaedra, I think is how you would say it. This one really stuck out to me because it said this is perfect for fans of Madeline Miller and Natalie Haynes. I don't recognize the name Natalie Haynes actually, so I'll have to look her up, but Madeline Miller is the one who wrote a song for a killer. A Song of Achilles, and I really, really enjoyed that book. I do enjoy learning about mythology. I just think it's pretty interesting. And I like that it's like a mix of historical fiction and fantasy, which are two of my favorite genres. So I like that this will be an educational <laughs> experience for me at the least, and that's why I really do enjoy historical fiction, because I am not familiar with this character, Phaedra. And so since I don't know her story, it'll be really fun to discover things as I read the book. And this book is actually not too thick. I think sometimes the mythology fantasy books or historical fiction books can get quite dense. There can be a lot of info in them, but this looks like it'll be a very doable one. Next up, we have another thriller. This is Lisa Joel's The Truth About Melody Brown. I actually have probably three or four other Lisa Joel books that are on my TBR shelf, but she's another one like Megan Miranda that just every time I go on Book Outlet, I put her name in and I just see what is new and this one was available, so I picked it up. And even though I haven't gotten to a lot of her books, I'm really, really eager to read more from her. And you're definitely gonna see me reading a lot of her books throughout the winter season, throughout the next six months or so. I do really enjoy her writing style and this looks like it'll be a very quick read too. And it does sound interesting. It says, Melody Brown can remember nothing before her ninth birthday. Now in her early 30s, Melody lives in the middle of London with her 17 year old son. She hasn't seen her parents since she left home at 15 but slowly things from her past are coming up and she's slowly figuring out her early childhood that she forgot. And it looks like just from flipping through that the book takes place in two different time periods, which I absolutely love. I love historical fiction books that do that and I love thrillers that do it too. There's a real chance that I already own this book. <laughs> I'm not really sure. This might've been a book that I picked up like at a thrift store or something, but worst case scenario, I'll give one of the copies to somebody else. This is Sea of Tranquility. I've seen this so many places. 
I've heard people talk about it. It sounds like it's going to be a really good book. It is a gorgeous cover. The cover says that it takes the reader from Vancouver Island in 1912 to a dark colony on the moon nearly 500 years later. So that whole premise sounds really similar to Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Doerr. That book also took place across a wide range of time and I absolutely love that book. Five stars for me, highly recommend. And also All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. This book is a lot shorter than Cloud Cuckoo Land, so that might be a good thing, might be a bad thing. It did take me quite a while to read Cloud Cuckoo Land. But since I know how popular this book is, definitely let me know down below if you have read it and if you liked it. I know that the cover drew me into this book because I have literally no idea what it's about and I'm very confident I've never read anything from this author before. Sarah asked Madison Allen. The book is called Other Birds. It's set in South Carolina and it says, in this town lies a stunning cobblestone building comprised of five apartments. It's called the Della Wisp and it's named after the tiny turquoise birds who alongside the human tenants inhabit an air of magical secrecy. So this girl named Zoe is coming to claim her deceased mother's apartment. And the night that she arrives, one of her neighbors dies. This main character, Zoe, is really thrust into the mystery of the Della Wisp, which involves missing pages from a legendary writer whose work might be hidden there. She soon discovers that many unfinished stories permeate the place and the people around her are in as much need of healing from wrongs of the past as she is. So it says that Other Birds is filled with magical realism and moments of pure love that won't let you go. So this sounds very sweet. A lot of times I don't love contemporary fiction, but it sounds like it's kind of like contemporary fiction mixed with some fantastical elements. So hopefully I will really enjoy this one. Up next is A Broken Blade. I'm pretty sure this is the first book in the Halfling Saga by Melissa Blair. And I've seen a lot of her books around and I just never dove into them. And I for sure have a lot of other fantasy books to get through probably before I get to this one. But like I said, if I see a good deal on Book Outlet, I tend to just scoop it up, especially when they are having really good sales because a lot of times books like this don't last very long. It says that Kira is a killer. As the King's Blade, she is the most talented spy in the kingdom and the king's favorite assassin. When a mysterious figure moves against the crown, Kira is called upon to hunt down the so-called shadow. So then she goes into the magical lands of the Fae, but Fae land is not what it seems. Sounds a little similar to maybe another <laughs> romanticy series. And that is kind of like my only beef with some of these series is that they all kind of blend together. I feel like the female main characters are all like the same character, like they're all the same person, but they are usually fun reads. I do very much enjoy a good fantasy book. Up next is Wicked by Gregory Maguire. Definitely not a new book by any means. I remember that my mom had these books when I was growing up and I tried to get into this book and I just couldn't get into it, but I was probably like literally 14 when I tried to read it. So when I saw it on Book Outlet, I decided I would just go ahead and give it another try. I did actually see the musical and I enjoyed it. I don't think I like totally loved it. But I'm also pretty sure the musical and the book are not like uber similar. Definitely correct me if I'm wrong there. But yeah, for six bucks, I did want to give this book another try. I really enjoy the Wizard of Oz series and I think this is the backstory of the witch. Yeah, it says, where did she come from? How did she become so wicked? And what is the true nature of evil? Here we have Riley Sager's Survive the Night. He's just another one who I really like to pick up his books whenever they are available. And this is definitely one of like the most intriguing taglines I feel like I've ever read in a thriller. It says that it's November 1991, which I love because I mean, I'm a 90s girl, I'm a millennial, and I feel like there's not many books that are actually set in that time period that were not like actually written in the 90s, you know? It says Nirvana's in the tape deck, George H.W. Bush is in the White House, and movie obsessed college student Charlie Jordan is in a car with a man who might be a serial killer. Check, check, check. This sounds super interesting. I'm for sure gonna be reading this one very soon. All right, just a few more. This is Sarah J. Mass's The Assassin's Blade. Not too much to say about this one. I'm just slowly collecting the Throne of Glass series because as soon as I finish the A Court of Thorns and Roses series, I do wanna dive right into this one. I think this is the third book I now have, but yeah, haven't read any of them yet. And I've heard from a couple of my friends that they actually do prefer this series over 
A Court of Thorns and Roses and that this is less sexually graphic, which is the major thing that I don't like about A Court of Thorns and Roses. So let me know what you think because I know a lot of you have probably read both series. Which one do you prefer? Another thriller I don't know much about that totally drew me in. This is What Have We Done by Alex Finley. I'm not sure if this person, don't know if it's a boy or girl, I don't know if they have written anything else. It is a guy, it looks like he wrote his first novel in 2021 called Every Last Fear and I have not seen that or heard much about that one. Although it must have done well because it was published in 17 languages and is currently in development for a major television limited series. So good job, Alex. This has a good tagline as well. It's a stay-at-home mom with a past, a has-been rock star with a habit, and a reality TV producer with a debt. Three Desperate Lives, One Deadly Secret. Ugh, I just love books like this. I really love books that are from multiple perspectives, especially three very different perspectives like that. And then the last one, I have been wanting to read this book for quite a while. This is The Book Eaters. One of the most clever covers, I guess, I think I've ever seen. One of the reviews says that The Book Eaters is a darkly sweet pastry of a book about family, betrayal, and the lengths that we go to for the ones that we love. A delicious modern fairy tale. I love that. I love fairy tales. I love like reimaginings of fairy tales. And the blurb says that out on the Yorkshire moors lives a secret line of people for whom books are food and who retain all of the book's contents after eating it. Devon is part of the family, an old and inclusive clan of book eaters. Her brothers grew up feasting on stories of valor and adventure, and Devon, like all book eater women, was raised on a carefully curated diet of fairy tales and cautionary stories. But real life doesn't always come with happy endings, as Devon learns when her son is born with a rare and darker kind of hunger, not for books, but for human minds. So this sounds really interesting. I feel like this could easily be a five-star book. Honestly, a lot of these books I think could be five stars, and that's another reason I love Book Outlet, is you can get books cheap that you might not have wanted to pay $25 for, you might not have heard of them before. Yes, non-sponsored, I just really, really love Book Outlet. But all right, you guys, that was my last big book haul of the month. I probably will end up picking up another book or two this month, so I can't say these are the last books of the year. I have some really fun, cozy days planned in cute little towns all around Columbus, so definitely make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss any of the book miss content. And if you like this video, please make sure to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe. It really does help my channel out a lot. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!